Cure on this Monday evening. Uh, first of all, I want to say and just kind of take a moment to give a, a special quick shout out to Columbus Black for allowing me to have this platform to speak to you all. Uh, first thing I want to say as well, if you can go to ColumbusBlack.com's uh, Facebook page, <clears throat> excuse me, go to their Facebook page and uh, go to their link and subscribe to be a member. That way you'll get all the notifications and see, you know, when I come on the show and everything. And there are also some other uh, really good talent that are going to be coming on every day of the week, talking about everything from sports to finance to things that are culinary and what have you. So um, again, thank you very much, Columbus Black, for allowing me to kind of uh, speak to the folks out here. So let's just get started. Let's get into it. So um, first of all, let me just tell you briefly, very briefly, a little bit about me and what what it is that I do and how I kind of came to this to this moment. So I am an author. Uh, I am, in addition to that, I'm a matchmaker and also a dating coach. I've been an author for about about ooh, about six years now, and uh, prior to that. I, I did a podcast uh, for many of you who have been following me almost since the infancy. It was called the Blair Nash Chronicles. And what it was about was it was just talking about everything related to relationships. And it was, it, it was, it did very well, did very good. Give me a second. I'm just trying to uh, share this to, to my page so all of you can follow. Uh, so bear with me just a second. All right, done deal. Okay, so um, I started back in 2014 and I had a podcast that was called the Blair Nash Chronicles and it talked about everything relating to relationships. Uh, we talked about, you know, the inf infamous old age question of why men cheat, uh, talked about, you know, dating outside of, you know, racial lines. We talked about, you know, kind of the thing of, you know, men dating, you know, younger women men dating older women, et cetera. So we, we kind of hit on a number of different topics uh, and it was very, very successful, had a great time doing it. From there, it kind of spawned me leaving a lot of quotes and things on social media. And so people would say, you know, man, you, you really have a great deal of knowledge of what things you're talking about. And I said, okay, thank you. And so then I started hearing people say, well, why don't you write a book? And I said, hmm, I never fashioned myself as an author, but okay, let's try it. Let's, it, let's, it did great. It did wonderful. That was my first book, which I guess I should have had that here uh, with me. It was called Illuminating the Battlefield. Uh, when did very well. My next book came out a year later. <clears throat> excuse me. And it was called Love is a Beautiful Thing Till It Ain't. And then my most recent book came out and it is titled The Hidden Discussion, uh, Black Money, Sex and Relationships. And pretty much most of the books, uh, they're, they're, they're unique in their all, in all in their own all in their own lane, but they're also very different in the aspect that uh, of kind of the way that I, of kind of the, the direction and strategy with which I went in writing the book at that time. And they're definitely all, you know, very needed. From there, I started um, having a number of people who reached out to me and said, hey, you know, this dating world out here is, it's, it's something else, it's different. And so, you know, people were like, well, why, you know, I mean, I'd love for you to coach me and kind of give me some strategies and some insight into what I'm doing wrong. You know, am I doing everything wrong? Do I need to scrap everything and start all over? Uh, and so I became a, I became a dating coach, uh, went and got a certification and, and been doing it for almost four years now. I started in July of 2017. Then from there, uh, back about two years ago, I started being a matchmaker and have been doing that for quite, you know, for a little bit of time as well, which leads us to our point. What is dating like and why do we have such the struggle that we do in the dating in the dating arena? So one of the many things that a lot of uh, women come to me and talk about is Blair, you know, these these men out here, they're, you know, they they just they don't know how to court. They don't know how to court women. They don't know how to date women. They just jump in your inbox. And the first thing they want to do is, you know, like send me a pic, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What, it, you know, I want a guy to, you know, to, to be charming and I want him to do this and I want him to do that. And yeah, you, you, you know, a guy should be doing those things. Uh, I think what's happened is we are in a, we are in a digital world. And so with that comes all sorts of changes. <clears throat> I, I kind of equated to 
almost everything we do in our world right now, right? If and I and I get I gave an illustration um, a couple weeks ago on a different show, and I said um, if you were to lose your job tomorrow, right? You 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 walk, you walk in or you know you're now with everybody being home, your boss calls in, uh, you know such and such. We don't need you anymore. We're we're going a different direction, you know, we're done. All right, we'll give you some severance, but we're done here, right? For about maybe about a week or so, you're going to be kind of like, man, I can't believe I was, I had plans. I was going to do this. I was going to put an addition on my home and trips. And now I got it. And you do that for about a week. Right. But then after a week, you kind of pull yourself together and said, okay, let me get this job search together. Let me figure out what I need to do. Right. Back in 1990, you go look in the newspaper, right? You go to a one you go look for help wanted signs or whatever. Right. They, those aren't there anymore. Right. So everything now, pretty much, I would say 90 something percent of all jobs are online or they're through a headhunter or through some other, you know, form or whatever. But it's no, there's no newspapers anymore. There's no getting the, the little newslet from, you know, your local newsstand and kind of going through and sifting through different, you know, different jobs. No, no, no. So things are different now. We have a way of looking at dating where it's a situation where you have to actually get online and possibly meet people, right? Enter myself. So what I try to help people to understand is, you know, no, you should still have your standards. If you if you want a, if you expect a man to do X, Y, and Z, to open your doors, to, you know, court you, to, you know, pull your chair out, help you put on your coat, those things have not changed. They have not changed at all. The only thing that's changed is the way that you meet people simple so what i did what i did and and just a little kind of shameless plug as well i have a fourth book that's going to be coming out here um uh, sometime sometime this year it'll be probably out in the late spring and it's called throwing the rose colored glasses out the window and the title was one i had thought about for quite some time where i had said to myself what are some of the you know what are some of the struggles and challenges that i've noticed that women are kind of dealing with in in the dating in the dating world and a lot of it is kind of going back to the fundamentals of you know do do i do i really know how to properly date and i and when i say properly date, i don't mean do you throw on a cute outfit it's it's more to that there's a there's much more of a strategy to that so do you know how to properly date do you know how to not only get a man's attention but keep a man's attention and so these are these are some of the things that you know I talk about in this new book, throwing the rose colored glasses out the window. Like I said, keep on the lookout for that. It'll be out sometime, uh, like I said, sometime late spring, early summer. But um, what I did in the book was I just kind of chronicled all the different things that you need to understand about dating nowadays. One of the struggles and one of the challenges that a lot of folks have is I don't want to go back. Excuse me. <clears throat> I don't want to go back all the way to the very beginning of dating. I don't want to go back and ask this dude, what's his favorite color? And I don't want to, you know, do all these things. That's, you know, that's, that's not what it's about. So that's not what I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Sorry. You know, you don't want to go back to all these different, um, all these different things of just starting back from the beginning, asking him what's his favorite color and, you know, what's the first movie that he saw ever. Those are things that you kind of look at and say, eh, you know, I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to kind of skirt past that. So, but that's all part of the process and you cannot circumvent or shortcut the process. So that's what the book is about. One of the things that I teach, uh, even in my coaching, one of the things that I teach uh, young women about w when they're saying that, you know, Blair, I'm having struggle, I'm having a challenge trying to meet different guys is do not learn, do not be afraid to relearn the fundamentals. And what do I mean by the fundamentals, right? Uh, when you, when you start, when you begin the dating process, how is your attitude, right? What's your attitude like? But before we even get there, before we even go to the bridge of, you know, is my attitude right? Is my, have you done the work, right? Have you done the work of making sure that you are actually ready to date? And what happens with, a, with us a lot of times is we tend to 
have a scenario where maybe we feel discomfort or maybe we feel lonely or maybe we're looking for companionship and we're saying we say yeah i know the last guy that i broke up with recently may have hurt me but i'm ready to date and i want so i just want some companionship blair i want someone to you know be able to talk to at night i want someone who i can you know tell stuff to and you know if i want to go you know to a movie you know i don't know about COVID right now but if i want to go to the movies or go do anything i want someone to be able to do that with so that that's those are the things that you have to figure out first are you ready to move forward with that kind of dating so are you ready have you done the work have you put in the effort the energy and everything else with that so what i want to do is i want to bring in uh someone who also um who's you know right now kind of you know in the dating field and everything and are you there can you hear me cindy Cindy, can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me now? I can, I okay. can. How are you, ma'am? I'm well, how are you? Doing excellent, doing well. Good to see you. Uh, for everyone, uh, this is Cindy Hill. Uh, she is a good friend of mine and I just wanted to kind of bring her in. Uh, we have a lot of discussions about the dating atmosphere and kind of how it's, you know, how it's, you know, just a challenge, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't you say it's a challenge? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, what I wanted to just kind of ask you and just kind of, you know, throw it to you. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing out there in the dating world? What are you what are some of the things that you, you know, like, you know, I, I'm, I think I'm doing everything right. And I'm an attractive young lady and I'm sweet and I'm this, but yet it's not translating to the next level. What are what are the things that you're seeing from the men that you're dating out there? I would say the biggest thing is that I don't feel like I am being pursued. Mm, um, yeah. yeah, and 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 that's that is my greatest desire as a woman is to be pursued. Okay. Um, and and I just don't find that uh, the connections are being made, uh, and that they are, and that they're lasting to where. Um, I am being pursued and relationships are sustained. Uh, I'll put okay. it that way. Yeah. Do you yeah. think, uh, thank you for your comment. Do you think it's a situation where men are, do you think that men just don't know? Do you think that they know and don't really care because they're like, I can, I can get me another Cindy. I can, I can get another her if it doesn't work out. And so therefore, by proxy, I don't really have to put a lot of effort into this. Do you think that's the situation? Or do you think men just simply, you know, this is just a different breed of men and, and whatever? What are your thoughts on that? So that is something that I've asked myself, you know, are is it that I have too high of expectations and, you know, I'm not willing to set my expectations and standards to the side. And so, you know, is it that men are saying, well, you know, she has her expectation. She's not going to meet me where I am. So, you know, that's cool. There are, you know, 10, 15, 20 other Cindy's that I have to choose from. So I'll just move on to the next. I'm not going to put in the work and I'm just going to move on to the next Cindy. Right. Um, you know, there's a thousand Cindy's out there. So I'll just move on to the next. So, you know, I, I just kind of feel like, no one's willing to, or there aren't many that are willing to take a chance on truly taking the time to get to know me. So I feel like the connections just aren't sustained, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. Do you find, very, very good, uh, very good uh, thought on that. Do you find that men are honest and transparent with what they're, what they're looking for? Uh, or do you find it's a situation where men say, I want a relationship with you. I want to, you know, I want to treat you special. I want to, I see marriage in our future, et cetera, et cetera. But then whether it's three, whether it's six months down the road, they sort of move the goalposts and they're like, I don't know if I really want that. What do you, do you, do you find that men are like that? Or do you find that men are transparent? Because here's the thing, it would make sense. It, you would think in a, in a realistic setting, you would think that, men would be just open and honest, right? And they would say, you know, hey, I just, you know, I think you're cute. I just want to, you know, do whatever. And, you know, we stay friends. We'd be in a situationship, right? That's mm -hmm. what you would think. 
But mm -hmm. um, in talking with a lot of different women, I find that they are struggling with the fact of me meeting men and not not meeting men per, per se, but meeting men and them what what the men say that they want, what the men say that they want, and what they actually are seeking don't really you know don't really jive. So do you find that that's the case with a lot of men that they say you know I think you're special, I think you're wonderful, but you know then when you talk to them you know a little down the road it's like man that, man that was six months ago I don't want that no more. What, I mean, do you find that with a lot of men? I honestly, I do. I, I okay. have, and, and this, this is frustrating. I, I have had countless men say to me, you're this, you're that, you're, you're pretty, you're wonderful, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're, you're this, you're my ideal, you know, right. and, and I'm, I'm seeking um, someone to settle down with. I want marriage. And, mm -hmm. and it's like they say the right things, but mm -hmm. you, you you use the phrase, move the goalpost. And mm -hmm. so it, it, right. it gets moved out, you know, six months or mm -hmm. a year. And then, but what I find with me is that I feel like I've never been, I've never been chosen. Mm -hmm. so, so, so what I have found is that initially a man will say to me you're you're all these wonderful things but then they'll move the goalposts six months to a year out but then end up selecting or choosing someone else mm -hmm. and so then i'm hurt okay so that's been my experience wow so my my thing that i that i always that i always uh try to help women understand is this is it's a process you know there there's no guarantees you know, mm -hmm. in dating, even with matchmaking, with what I do, I tell people there are no guarantees. Uh, but I, I, I do believe that there is a process. And mm -hmm. what I try to help women to understand is, no, I, I'm not going to guarantee anything. But what I will say is that I have a very good knowledge of how you can you can tilt the odds in your favor. And so if it's a situation and, I, and I'll take you out of it, if it's a situation where a woman is like, you know, hey, I've been dating out here and, you know, I've, I've, I've met some great guys or guys that I thought were great and it's not really kind of connecting, nothing's really happening. And so what I do is I kind of walk them down and say, OK, let's go literally step by step by step. And that's what I was talking about. And I don't know if you were on the on, on the call at that time, but I said, never be too old, never get too high on yourself. Where you don't, where you don't think that you can relearn the fundamentals, yeah. you know, have yeah. you know before you even begin to date, and this is something I talk about in this in this book that I have that's coming out. Before you even begin to date, have you taken a true, honest, transparent, brutal self analysis of yourself, and say, you know, am am I am I really the kind of the kind of woman that these men are looking for, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm talking about everything. I'm talking about from mm -hmm. your you know, your 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 financial situation, to the looks, to your demeanor, to your femininity, all mm -hmm. those different things. Mm -hmm. And what happens, I think what a lot of, you know, a, a lot of times with dating, and this is something that you may have heard, you know, being my friend, you may have heard me talk about something called the Disney complex, where I say that a lot of times what happens with a lot of our sisters is they were told early on that everything about them is wonderful, everything about them is magical, right? from from like their formative years and so what happens is as they get older they mm -hmm. believe that they take this with them into adulthood that mm -hmm. no matter how you know mean mean my comments are no matter what size i am no matter all these different things no matter if i can't cook a lick no matter all these things some man out here is going to love me and love me tremendously mm -hmm. and rather than try to find the exception of a guy who's going to love you like that why not say to yourself, you know what? I know that most men like a woman who is very feminine. Most men like a woman who is domestic. Most men like mm -hmm. a woman who keeps herself in shape and start to kind of, you know, put the odds in your favor. So that's what I try to help women to understand is mm -hmm. slant the odds in your favor. You mm -hmm. know, there's nothing to be, there's no harm that can come from it. Put mm -hmm. the odds in your favor. If, mm -hmm. you're, if you're in a situation like, you know, I know you and I both both live in the Midwest, right? And so the Midwest has not ever really been a hotbed for meeting a lot of yes. professional 
you know, right. young singles, right? So if yeah. you say if you say to yourself, you know, and I'll and I'm gonna say this real quick and I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it over to you. I did a I did an event in Youngstown. It was maybe about three or four years ago. It was at a club and I was talking to the young ladies and I was just kind of going around and um just kind of going try, kind of getting a feel for the audience as they say right and i was mm -hmm. going around and i could just look at the it was mostly women and i could look at the look in their eyes and just see kind of the the lack of excitement and so i started asking the women i said you know how's the dating life here they like awful right and i was like oh man here we go okay and so i i started asking the women i said okay so the dating life here in youngstown is off i get it it's a it's a blue collar town it's you know rural town it's not one that's really known for having a lot of uh, kind of infusion of young, popular, not young, popular, but a young, successful black singles. I get it, right? So I asked them, have you been outside your city recently? Right. Have, have you gone to Charlotte, North Carolina? Have you gone to Atlanta? Have you gone to DC? Have you mm -hmm. gone to Houston? Have you gone to the areas where it is known that there are a lot of young, single, successful black individuals? Have you gone there? And they're like, no. I mean, I go somewhere every once in a while, but no. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, you know, and, 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 I'll, and, I'll, and I'll go back to my job reference that I made earlier. If you start to search for a job, right, and you find that, you know, you're looking around and you're like, you know what, there ain't nothing out here. I've, I've looked all through my city. I've been doing this for four months. You've got to expand your reach from that job outside of your, your area. You might say, you know what, I live in the Midwest. Maybe I might have to move to, you know, to, to, to Tennessee or, I mean, or to, you know, Seattle or, you know, I might have to get out of my comfort zone yes. to get what I need to get. And yes. so this yes. is what I think a lot of our sisters don't really understand and don't yes. get is you got to kind of move out of this idea of the guy, you know, throwing his, you know, throwing his coat down over a puddle and you walk over it and cascade and he's bringing you roses and, He's doing all these wonderful things, right? Okay. You have to get out of this mindset of thinking that it's just, it, there's a certain, a certain absolute way that a guy is gonna come to you, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I mean by kind of, you have to get out of, this is a digital world. The idea that you're gonna stay and he, he, he can't come to me at church. He can't come to me from a club. He can't come to me, you know, well, you're, you're kind of closing yourself off to all the different avenues that you could actually potentially meet men. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't like guys being in my inbox. Well, why? You don't you don't mind if your girlfriend sends you a message you're like, hey, you know, da 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 da. Why do you have a problem with a guy sending you a DM? Mm -hmm. So this is just kind of some of the things that I I try to help women to understand. Don't shoot yourself in the foot taking off and, and moving off all the different ways that a man could actually theoretically get in touch with you. So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? Absolutely, Blair. Um, you said so many good things and, um, you know, you're giving so many nuggets and, and I, I appreciate it. I, I take it all in. And mm -hmm. I'll start here. You talked about the fundamentals and um, that's something that I've really been taking to heart over the past three mm -hmm. months. Um, one of the things that I want to say is I wish all of the wisdom that I'm gaining now and all these nuggets that you've been dropping on me, I wish... I would have had 10, 15 years ago because I would be a lot further along in this journey, but mm -hmm. you are nailing it. One thing that I recognize is that I'm the common denominator in all of this and that I needed to change something. Um, I needed to do the work. So what I decided is that I needed to kind of go back to the fundamentals and really look at mm -hmm. how I'm doing relationships. <laughs> And right. um, one thing that I recognize is that I needed to do the work mm -hmm. differently. Um, okay. You talked about Good. putting yourself out there. That's something that I wasn't doing. So yes, I am a product of the Midwest. And one of yeah. the things that I used to say all the time is dating sucks here. There aren't enough good men here, but I had to ask myself, right. what are you doing? Are you putting yourself out there? And so that's something yeah. that you know, and building on the fundamentals, I had to decide for myself that I'm going to put myself out there differently. Um, mm -hmm. You talked yeah. about getting out of your comfort zone. So yeah, I had some past hurts. You know, mm -hmm. I was wearing, I recognized that I was wearing masks. You know, I talked about how I felt like I was never chosen. And I think that a lot of it was that I allowed those things and those hurts to kind of 
box me in or keep me from putting myself out there. So that's something that I recognize I had to change. Um, right. So again, it's just kind of getting back to those fundamentals, stepping outside mm. your comfort zone, putting yourself out there, putting yourself out there in different ways. And, right. you know, that may seem like some basic steps, but the, those are yeah. huge things in the dating world. And um, right. like I said, just recognizing that the common denominator is me and that if right. I don't do the work, I'm going right. to be in the same single position yeah, same. for yeah, a long yeah, yeah. time. So right. that that and, is how I look at it. And, um, yeah. you know, it, it, it's all good. It's all yeah. good. Yeah, it's, so. you know. The one thing I say, the the one thing I, I tell people all the time is dating is a very simple process. We mm -hmm. make it hard because yeah. at the end of the day, if, you know, let's say, Cindy, let's say the guy's name is Mark. If Mark is single and Cindy's single and you like him and he likes you, what's the problem? Why does it have to be, what, you know, then we start to like, what, what do we he have kids, right? And so then we start to kind of filter him out like, you know, is he really working or is he really about his business or whatever? Mm -hmm. we, we make we make dating so hard. And especially mm -hmm. I'm going to say this to my sisters. You all make dating so hard and it's such an easy concept. It really, really is. And mm -hmm. that's why, you know, you have um, and, and, I'll, and I want to make a quick reference. I You know, I have my last book. I was actually originally going to call it The Gender Wars because I started noticing around 2017, 2018 that there was there was a lot of, you know, just us being at each other, you know, just just attacking each other and saying things or whatever. And so we, we do have a gender war issue within the black community right now because the black women are like, hey, this is, you know, I, I don't, I'm not changing for nobody. He's, you know, a man that deals with me, he's going to have to take me as is. And the men kind of are on the other side, like, nah, sister, you got to change. I'm not dealing with you if you don't change. And so we're kind of at a stalemate in a, in a way. You know, mm -hmm. our numbers, of our marriage numbers are going down. You know, people, you know, even the ability to just kind of deal with one another is just, is going down and it's, it's, it's a sad sight to see. Mm -hmm. And you know, I will mention. I will mention this. You'll hear me. You know, over the over the months that I do this, you'll hear me make a lot of sports references and analogies. Um, one of the one of the analogies I always use is LeBron, LeBron James, and if you remember when LeBron came out, they called him the chosen one and all these different things. They're like, man, he's going to kill the NBA, right? Yeah. And so, you know, got into his first year, you know, got in the playoffs, no ring. Second year, playoffs, no ring. Third year, playoffs, no ring. Fourth year, playoffs, no ring. Right. And so finally. You know, we, you know, people started saying, well, you know what he needs? He needs a post game, right? But LeBron didn't want to listen to that, right? He wanted to just kind of, you know, he he's a, there has never been a, a freak of an athlete talent like LeBron James ever. So I'm not, I'm a, I'm a huge LeBron James fan. But I said even, he needs a post game. He needs to be able to go down in the post. If he learns a post game, it's a wrap, right? So it wasn't until I think either his eighth or ninth year that he actually learned how to play in the post. Yeah. Played in the post, went and, went, went and, um, went and practiced with Hakeem Olajuwon, who's probably, you know, un undoubtedly one of the best post presence people ever, right? Practiced with Hakeem Olajuwon over the summer, ring. Next next year, ring, right? Got a title. And so people were been screaming like, you need a post game. It's, you know, you've got everything else, but you've got to have a post game because everyone knows what you're going to do. You're going to use your athleticism and run down the middle. And, you know, some people are going to get scared and fly away. Right. But then some people are just going to stand there like this and take the charge. And eventually he'll be out. LeBron will be out the game. And this is kind of the same message message that I try to help women to understand in dating. No one's saying that you're not attractive. No one's saying that you don't have the other intangibles. Yeah. But what we are saying is you got to go back and learn some of the fundamentals of how to date properly. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a level of humbleness to be able to do that. It's not going to just happen. You got to basically say, you know what? I'm really not winning out here. I'm not mm -hmm. meeting the caliber of men that I'd like to meet in mm -hmm. order for this to happen. But again, that takes humility. That takes awareness of self mm -hmm. to be able to say, you know, yeah, I mean, there's always going to be guys. I'm a cute girl. There's always going to be guys that holler at me. But is there going to be guys quality men who are looking to actually do something more than just, you know, a little quick one night stand or whatever. So these are the things that I try to help women to understand in dating. You know, 
you you it, it's we're not saying to just scrap everything excuse me i'm not just saying to scrap everything and start over but i am saying you may have to go back and relearn some of the fundamentals are you a domestic type of person you know i ain't met a man yet that don't know how, that doesn't love a woman's cooking right <laughs> they're gonna there ain't a man out there right so if you understand this mm -hmm. why are you so adamant about and so gung you know so i, I don't cook that ain't my thing right Mm -hmm. You know, men, as a rule, love women who are feminine, right? And feminine mm -hmm. doesn't mean just painting your toes and wearing a dress. Feminine is your aura, your essence. Mm -hmm. If you realize that about men, why are you not working on that, right? So these are some of the things that I just try yeah. to help women to understand and, and get that, you know, it's, you know, yeah, there are some, there are some scrub men, for lack of a better term, out there. No question. I'm not going to put that out there and say it's mm -hmm. not. But in addition to that, I try to help women understand that if you do all those things, if you work on your femininity, if you uh, keep yourself together, if you're domestic, you know, men will start falling out the sky for you. But you got to be able to do the work first. It's not, well, once I meet him, I'm a change. No, 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 no. You got to do the work first. And then those men will start to, you know, appear. So that's Absolutely. pretty much it for my, my, uh, my part. Did you have any closing thoughts? Absolutely. Um, again, all good wisdom nuggets. Um, I appreciate it. I, I take it all in. Um, I'm not resistant to anything that, that you. I'm gonna I'm I'm send, I'm send you an I'm send you an invoice, Cindy. Shoot. Okay. I'm gonna send you an invoice. <laughs> you can you, you, can, char good, you all... can charge me charge me for these wisdom nuggets, but um, yeah, man. you know, always appreciate it. Um, I will say to your listeners that you know you you do give some pretty pretty darn good advice and it may not always feel great when you're giving it to me but i darn sure to listen to you um yeah, not supposed and, to and and i really appreciate the fact that you said dating is not complicated you know sometimes women make it a little complicated but from a, a, a male perspective it's it's really not complicated that that's that's no, appreciated not. It's, it's not yeah, it's not complicated. And that's why you that's yeah. why you hear a lot of men say some of the comments that they do because they're like, this is not a hard process. Yeah. It's really not. It's yeah. you know, if you're if you have a level of cute now, if you look tore back, you might have a challenge. But if you have mm -hmm. any level of cuteness and you can kind of even if you're a certain size, you're like, you know what, I'm you know, I'm two, two fifty, but I, I can pull myself together and whatever. Mm -hmm. Or if you're like, you know what, I'm a I'm kind of a I'm not exactly 23 years old anymore, but I'm still I'm still in the game. You can mm -hmm. do you can still get those type of men to come after you, those quality men. But you got to be willing to have everything together and doing that takes discipline doing that. And, and that discipline has to be consistent. It can't be, well, I did it for a month or two or three and, you know, it didn't work. So the hell with it. Right. That's not how right. it works. It has to be something that is part of your your everyday life it has to be a habit so yeah. absolutely so that's absolutely that's pretty much it um like i said i wanted to just kind of take this session and speak to you know a lot of the listeners and allow them to uh just you know just kind of you know i just kind of wanted to let them hear a few things and as again from a from a you know woman who's out there in the dating arena and just kind of you know see that hey ladies you're not alone you're not alone at all so um Thank you for listening to everyone. Uh, you can, you know, find out about me at, you know, www.blairnashspeaks.com. That is my website. Of course, I'm on Facebook as well. So if you want to, you know, check me out there, if you have any questions, um, feel more than free to hit me up. So thank you very much, Cindy. Thank you. Thanks for the invite. Oh, absolutely. No worries. Mwah. Thank you. <laughs>